We are working on notebook 15, working with Rasterio. So far, we have dealt with text files, structured data, vector data. Now, another type of raster data, another type of geospatial data that you'll be using a lot is raster data. Raster data is any data set which has grid of pixels. So you can think of satellite imagery is stored as raster data. You can think of elevation data, temperature data set, all of those come as grid of pixels. And they are stored in file formats such as GeoTIFF files, NetCDF files, and so on. So if you have any gridded pixel data, you can read them using Python using this library called Raster.io. So we'll learn about Raster.io and then solve a problem using that language. Raster.io is built on the GDAL library. So it uses GDAL to read and write geospatial data. It also provides some functions to do some raster data processing, such as merging files, reprojecting, clipping, etc. It is built on top of NumPy, so when you read data using Dust Drive, you will get a NumPy array. It also uses GeoPandas to do some raster data processing. So let's see how Dust Drive works. The problem that we want to solve is this problem that I faced when I was you know, trying to answer this question. Let me show you what the problem was. So I was working with the SRTM data. This is a very popular elevation data set. This was captured by a sensor aboard the International Space Station in early 2000s, and they mapped the surface of the Earth and mapped the elevation of every pixel. It's still one of the highest quality elevation data set that you can download. And I was working with some data set, and I wanted to check what is the elevation of Mount Everest represented in SRTM. So I downloaded one tile. So SRTM data comes in these tiles. So each tile, if I inspect each tile in QGIS, you'll see that it has got only one band of information, and this is the value. The pixel value is the elevation of the data. So this particular pixel is 2,138 meters above the ellipsoid, or above the geoid in this case. So the darker colors are low elevation, lighter colors are more elevation, higher elevation. So I downloaded one tile, and I realized, oh, the Mount Everest is not here. So I downloaded the neighboring tile, and I realized Mount Everest is not here as well. And then I downloaded one more tile, Mount Everest is not here. And then I downloaded another tile, and Mount Everest is not here, because Mount Everest is right at the intersection of these four tiles. So if I wanted to answer my question, what is the height of Mount Everest represented in the SRT data, I had to first merge these four tiles, and then I can check what is the value of the highest elevation. So we'll learn how to do this using Python. So we'll learn how to read this data set. So it can read any data set that is supported by GDA. In this case, this is a HGT format. This is a SRTM format. You can read that using raster.io. We'll read each raster. We'll merge them. This is not a simple merge like pandas, right? We have to now take into account where each tile is spatially. So we can use the raster's merge function to merge these four tiles and then create a merge raster out of this. So let's dive into the code. We'll import raster.io. This is the library that we install when we create an environment. Sometimes people import it as Rio by convention, but it's not very common. So you can use Rio or you can just do raster.io, anything that works. We have the data in your, the SRTM folder. Right now we'll just read one tile and see how to read the tile. So we define the path to it. And this is the path to one of the tiles. So this is the tile. To open this using raster.io, we use raster.io.open. The open function will open the data set. And let's look at what we get. So you can see that similar to how we open files in Python using raster when you open this, it says I've opened this file in write in read mode, and now I can read the data. The data set has two parts to it. When you read the data, the raster data is grid of pixels along with projection information. So you say I have a grid of pixels, and then there's an extra bit of information that tells Python or any of the software where this raster belongs to. So if you check the metadata, this is the header information that comes with your spatial rasters. We see that this one is in EPSG 4326, that's a CRS. This is the width and height of this raster. And you have something called a transform. This says 
this is the coordinates of the top left pixel of the raster. And this is the resolution of each pixel in degrees. And now if you know where is the top left pixel and what is the width of each pixel, we can now locate any pixel. Right? So this information allows any grid of pixels to be placed on the surface of the earth. That's how all the raster data is stored in a GIS data formats. So we have the, the data metadata that describes the data. And then we have the actual pixel values that represent each pixel. So we can read this data set and say data set dot pg. When we want to read this data, we need to say which band of information you want to read. Many times when you have data such as satellite data, you have multispectral data. So you have more than one band of information in different wavelengths. You have red, green, blue, near infrared, and so on. In this case, we have only one band. So we can just say data set dot read one. We need to specify the the number of the band in the counting in raster starts from one. So we say data set dot read one and you can get an array. So when you read this, you will get a numpy array that is that has the value of each pixel in the band one. If you had three band data, you can say read two, read three, and you'll get one array for each of those. So when you read this, you get your output. We'll just save it in band one variable. And if you check the type of band one, this is a numpy array. A simple numpy array. So now you can see how raster IO stores the data. It stores the numpy array along with the projection information. And that allows raster IO to say, I can now work with this raster as a geospatial raster. Similar to how we read files, once you're done with the file, you need to close the data set. So you can say data set dot close and it'll close the data set. So we have we learned how to read this data set extract the pixel values and then close it. Now, the problem that we have is we have this four individual data sets and we want to merge them. Raster.io has a bunch of options that allow to manipulate raster data. So you can come here and then there is a section on merging data. Let's search for merge in the documentation. So the Raster.io has this merge module which allows you to merge this different data set. If you read the documentation, there's a function raster.merge.merge, and you have all the different options here. Let's go through the options. The first option is a list of data sets that you want to merge. So it says you can give a list of data sets opened in R mode. So we know how to open a data set. You can say raster.read, and you have the data set. Or you can just give file names or path. So you can say this is my file path. I have four files. Merge them into a single raster, and you can do this. Other options are all optional. You can control how they are merged. What if there's an overlap between two rasters? What will be the value in the overlap region? How will you merge that? What will be the resampling mode? What will be the resolution of the output raster? And so on, if your rasters have different resolution. In our case, we don't have overlap. We don't have any, all of the rasters have same resolution. So we can just simply say raster.merge.merge and a list of data set. And it'll just give us a merged data set. So let's try this. We go to the os.lister function to get a list of files. And then we can iterate through each data set. And we can get a list of paths. So we can say for file in all files, we construct the full path to the file. And we just create a list of the paths to the data sets. So I have the paths. And now I can just call the merge function and say merge this four files. It's going to open that, merge them, and you get a larger raster that represents this. So you can say raster.merge.merge, list of data set, and then we can see the result. And you can see you have this larger raster that was merged. One of the things that will change is once you merge it, your transform will change. You now have a bigger raster and the extent and the size of the raster will change. So now we have this larger raster. You see there's an array, and you have a new transform that describes the place of the new array. We can kind of see what they are. So we can see the shape of the array. There's a NumPy function to check how big is the raster. It's one band of information, 7 to 0, 1 pixels wide, 7 to 0, 1 pixels tall. So this is the you know twice than the actual oh, single array. So we have our merged data. So we have this array. Let's write it to disk. 
when you're writing the data, you need to specify what array you want to write and what is the transform, what's the size of the array, what projection. So we can just say, I want to write it to this merge.tiff and we say, I want to open the path in the write mode. So now we open this final write mode, specify all the options, what's the width, what's the height, what's the node data value, what's the CRS. And finally we say, this data set, write the merge data that we have created. So run this. And once we close it, the file will get written and get a new file merge.tiffium. Let's check this. So you can see we process this data using Python. We have the output file. We have the merge.tiff. And you can see now I have this merged file, which is the single raster representing the single value at each pixel created from the source four files. Now we've done the work to merge them. Let's do an exercise for you to find out what's the elevation of Mount Everest. <laughs> 